So what's the Kennison story? Oh, well, you know, uh, when we met, uh, he was working the door and he had started uh, doing late night spots right. about, you know, the last one, yeah. like, you know, one forty five in the morning. Right. And uh, that's all he could get at that time. And he came up to me. And at that point, I was already a regular and I was in playing in the main room and I was getting standing ovations every night. Yeah. And he came up to me and he said, man, I'm, I'm just such a fan. I love what you do. And uh, I, I go on really late at night. I go on but the last spot in the, in the original room. And uh, w- would you hang out and watch me? And I said, yeah, sure. So I, I hung out that night and, uh, and I watched him. Yeah. <laughs> Makes me cry to think about it. Uh, I sat at the back of the room, man, and I watched the world change. Yeah. You know? And, uh, and I, I was crying with laughter. Yeah. And it's the first time I had ever seen somebody marry you know, comics are usually intellectualizing things, yeah, you know, right. they, they, they go above the emotion to intellectualize something and say to the world, you know, here's how you deal with it without having to come apart. Uh-huh. But he was the first one that was immersed in his emotions yeah, and his anger yeah, and expressing that at the same time as there were these brilliant routines that I'd never heard anything like. Yeah. And I felt like I was watching Bird. I was watching Charlie Parker. Oh, I was wow. watching, you know, early Miles Davis. I was like, I was seeing something really extraordinary. And he came off stage and came up to me and said, what do you think? And I said, what do I think? I think you're it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, good luck to you. Because <laughs> it's that's going to be difficult. Yeah. Uh, plus, plus he picked, I knew that he had picked a character and a persona as we speak about the book. Yeah. And the personas we create that sometimes we can't live up to. Uh, the beast. He created a persona that he couldn't get out of basically or every live time up he to. got every it, yeah every time he got sober people came up and screamed in his face yeah and uh needed him to be the beast you know and yep. so that was a very hard thing to get out of we used to we drove to Tulsa together and uh he was he was going to train me how to preach and we were going to go on the road because he wasn't known yet we were going to go on the road as pentecostal preachers uh-huh. and he was going to call me lightning boy jim uh-huh. and i was going to do his, the thing we never got to do it but uh, i got to listen to him preach in the garage with brother marnie and the family some energy right it was the energy incredible incredible energy and i and it was it was kind of wild to see because he hit so hard you know at a certain point that uh, he got kind of carried away and frozen in the image of himself. And so you notice like the second album and the second yeah, or yeah. third letterman isn't as tight and isn't as, it's more about who he's become. Well, it's, it's, it's about what he had to say. It became, you know? you know, it became sort of like, I can do this, this fucked up. But it also became like a rock star. He became yeah, a rock that was star. Crazy. And every rock star in the world was fawning all over him. So it was tough. It's a tough ego thing, man, when you're faced with that kind of, you know, reverence, you know, coming at you. You know, I didn't think he was able to handle it. Yeah, but the guitar thing, I, you know, my feelings about him are complicated, you know, but uh, but it just seemed to me that, you know, the clarity of that first record or the night you saw him or the night yeah. that you were hanging out with the vision, him. Yeah. Yeah. There and, was a vision. and like, you know, yeah. a lot of people don't realize like when you walked into the room and he was doing that shit from that first record, the, the you know, he changed this, you know, the energy in the fucking room. No, it was like, crazy. It was menacing, dude. It was and, like and menacing. Woe, woe to those who became offended enough to leave because then he was ripping you apart. It was the guy had his dick in her purse and yeah, it was, I hope you find a lump. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, my God, he would go to places that people were just, what did he say? But, you know, you also you know, were able to create a sort of different energy because of the, the intensity you brought to it. And you, you became a star before him so i'm imagining you're looking at him going through his paces and i don't know how close you guys remained you know during that time or if you were at all or or you or he used to hide himself from you at that point but i mean there was a time when we got when we got when we split you know because he was going down that direction of the outlaw yeah and uh i you know i i hung for a long time with him and we got in some scraps and together and you know, there was some, you know, it got pretty hairy around Sam, you know, yeah. it, was, oh, like, yeah, it was pretty hairy. So I just know myself, 
and I know that I wasn't meant to be, uh, I, I have a, I have a, a rebellious streak, but I'm not an outlaw, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And me too. And me I, too. And I, there, there came a time where, uh, we had a sit down that did not tur- turn out well. Right. Uh, because he wanted me to come on the road with him. And I said, I just can't, Sam. I'm sorry. You know, I just, I, I'd like to I live. To do my own thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm clinging to this thing called life. <laughs> that was always the feeling I got. Someone's going to go down. It's probably going to be, and it me. Will be me. Yeah. Exactly. I'm the guy that catches what it meant for him. Exactly. 